hello guys this is sam presto from sam presto films and it's been a long time we had something like this we've been busy shooting movies and commercials and music videos and our web series that we took a long break from tutorials and the workshops and seminars so but today welcome to red digital masterclass where we'll be talking about a lot of things that has to do with red camera the fundamental red camera the owners of red camera what camera they started with the languages of red camera like here is something like brain modules and the sensors dynamic range f-stops and a lot of things that you just hear around red cameras accessories and all those stuff so that's what we're going to be talking on today and by the end of this master class you should be able to understand fully how to operate a red camera and when to use a red camera and if red camera is going to be one of your gears for your film productions so by the end of this whole seminar master class you should be able to be a pro on red camera usage so without wasting your time let's just start doing this so first of all red camera what is red camera red camera is owned, it's a digital it's a cinematic digital company owned by what is his name jim jenard from usa they, they it was founded by 2005 at california so they decided to do these cinematic cameras and they have studios in hollywood so to help whatever they wanted to achieve at that moment so they started with the red one after the red one they did the red scarlet and from the red scarlet before they introduced the red one and the red scarlet was using sensor called the mysterious sensor so after that they now introduced it then they were using the red dsmc so after that they introduced the red dsmc2 which from there the red scarlet w the red dragons and the the epic the other body or brand that uses the dsmc2 so and most time dealing with red you'll be hearing some name dsmc2 what is the meaning of dsmc2 it's just red digital still and motion cameras too so it's not really anything big so it's a body this is dsmc2 so it's the body red digital motion and still camera so still and motion camera so this camera has the ability to take a still and a motion camera and a motion footage but as a red raw file the red raw file where you can actually pick up pick out a still image from it not like as a normal cinematograph mm, camera photographer that shoots with your shutter no you record this and it's on a red raw you can actually pick out very good high dynamic range still pictures from this okay now let's start from here we hear things like the red brain this is a brain this is the red brain and okay let me go through on whatever we have here and after that then i will explain the different kind of red cameras that is in the market now this is dsmc2 dsmc2 you could see it i think it's written somewhere somewhere you see dsmc2 okay it's not here though but cool okay it's here but you might not see it i'll show it to you later dsmc2 so it's it's a red it's a red body it's a red system they introduce and that has a different sensors on it on this dsmc2 you you have the the dragon sensor you have the you have the monstro you have the helium you have the 
the helium, which is the epic W. Then you have you have the Mostro, you have the helium, you have the red Gemini on this. So those are different sets of that these on this body. This body you could see looking alike but different cameras. The Mostro is on 8K. The helium two is on 8K sensor. Then the Gemini is a 5K sensor. Now this is Dragon S, which is still a 5K sensor, and <clears throat> it also has the 6K sensor. So this red, what red does is to create a body, body which they call brain, and put different sensors on it. Those sensors is more like the recording, the recording engine, the processing engine that processes the the pictures. So those sensors determine the quality, the dynamic range of whatever this body is capturing. So I can, you can see the same body, the same size with a different sensor. So each of the sensors determines if it's going to capture 8K footage, or a 6K footage, or a 4K footage, or a 5K footage, or a 4.5K footage. So on this sensor here, on this body, we have the Dragon X. So, and the Dragon S is capturing on 5K. So, the sensor here is Dragon S. On this body, which is called the D, or the DS, the DSMC2. So, this body, this mode of this body, this technology red produce is called the DSMC2. There's a different body that is not DSMC22. I'll be showing you those ones. But this particular body is the DSMC2. And on this body now that is the DSMC2, the sensor, that is the, the processor, what processes the, the image, sensor on this one is Dragon S 5K. I don't know if, if you guys are understanding. I will take it slow. I want you to really, really... Instead of understanding just the coupling, you need to understand what you're dealing with and what is out there so that you you can make the best choice and it really do you understand do you understand what I'm trying to explain? Like let me use the car for example. You have the camera, I drive a camera. Now inside the camera, if you look at the body, it's a camera muzzle. We call it muzzle in this part of Nigeria. Inside those ones you have one that is four cylinder. You have another one that is six cylinder but looking at the body they look alike so now this is like four cylinder on this it's capturing the 5k then the same camera has six cylinder engine the same body six cylinder so the performance of the four cylinder is different from the performance of the six cylinder so that's what i'm trying to explain now this is the dsmc2 that has different sensors on it those sensors are like they see like the engine what pushes the car so those sensors have the 8k engine has the 6k engine they have the 5k engine and have the 4.5k engine so when you are buying a camera depending on your pocket or what you want to achieve you know the kind of engine you want for the body now that is like one kind of their car the camera then they have a different we'll still go to that they have a different body like let me say the Benz, the ranger those ranger has different almost the same engine on it then they have another body we call the komodo maybe the corolla the flexible one that everybody can buy the komodo introduced a new sensor on that one and the new sensor is the red global shutter sensor why the ranger are for high rangers like rugged they are rugged body for high cinematic film productions the rangers are usually longer than this so they take only the helium the moisture and the gemini sensor on the ranger so they don't take other sensors like the the red dragoness you can't find it on the ranger so what you can find on the ranger is the helium the Mostro and the Gemini. So let me. I'll be. This this will be a flexible class, which I'll be showing you guys. As I'm talking about these sensors, I'll be showing you here the Ranger.
Okay, now let me let me explain to you. Now this is this is the red. This is the red ranger. If you can see it from there, this is the red ranger. Look at it bigger, longer, and this is the DSMC2, which is this. Now this is the Komodo. Komodo, which is the smaller version. They just introduced this. It's a very portable red. It shoots on 6K. This only have this can only take the 6K sensor, the global shutter sensor. That's what only this can take. Why this DSMC2 and the Ranger can take a different sensor, meaning they can take a different engine. The four cylinder, the six cylinder, the eight cylinder. So maybe we can we can even use the car as an example. Four cylinder will take it like 4K, the six cylinder will take it like V v6 then the eight cylinder will take it like v8 so it's, it's helping to so this guy can take a v4 can take a v6 can take a v8 the same way this guy can take a v4 that is four cylinder can take a v6 can take a v8 why this guy on the other hand the way it's built for now he only takes a v6 global shutter engine sensor so let's let's continue on this. <clears throat> Talking so, about, I hope you understand this body. Like we can always use when I use V4, just know it's four. I'm talking about 4K. When I use V6, I'm talking about 6K. When I use V8, now I'm talking about 8K. So that will help you understand when we say the sensor, the Mosu 8K sensor, the the Dragon S 6K sensor, then the what is it called the Raven the 4.5k sensor and all those so just see like this the DS MC2 is the body of the car then with different engine that is the V4 the V6 then the V8 <coughs> that way we understand when cameras say there's a lot of camera and you see there's different sensor with different brand and all those stuff that's what it means the body but the machine what is processing the pictures that is the sensor what sensor do you have on it? What sensor do you want to use? What sensor can you afford? And a lot of people can, want to use V8. Doesn't mean we are driving V8. We are still, for me, I'm still managing my V4. We are, we are heading to V6 very soon. So, uh, we know V8 is the ultimate. You, the shock absorbs are, or absorber, the, the bigness, the comfortability. So, see it that way. When you're using the 8K mm -hmm. sensor, your dynamic range, you have those 17 stops and compared to this, this is 16.5 stops. So, and you know that the pictures you have from the 8K cannot be compared with the pictures. And the 8K is full frame. That is the Vista Vision. The most, the most true Vista Vision is full frame. And this is, still has its crop sensor on Dragon. 5k crop sensor i'll be showing you i have a tutorial that i think i might be linking it to this where you can actually understand the crop sensors of different red and so far i think is the most true with vista vision that is actually full frame none of them is full frame it's only the most true that is full frame vista vision that you can actually shoot on 8k and have the full frame all this other one has the little crop sen crop sensor stuff that is not really a disadvantage but <clears throat> it's the way the sensor is so for the way it was built so going on let's let's try and mention everything we have here with what we have here you can actually set up a red camera and you start shooting so this is the brain that has a 5k dragon S sensor and this is a this is this this came in as a kit it was bought as a kit but normally when you're good and you know what you want you can actually buy your red yourself you can build your red yourself you don't need to buy it as a kit you just pick whatever you want like this this is the brand but here it doesn't come with this this is a module this is the power 
the VLOG modules that has the headphone, the mic and the USB, the gen lock. Is that the gen lock? Yeah, this is the sync, this is the control, then this is the HDMI that has the HDMI, that has the SDI output and the power input. So with the VLOG battery, if you're not buying this as a kit, it doesn't come with this. You still have to buy this module separately and lock it here. The normal sensor comes with only this part of the body. So this is a complete head now. Red head, red sensor with the battery modules that can actually carry a battery. This is a V-Log battery. So with this V-Log battery, you can actually just fix it here now. And it laps. So this has a V-Log battery. Now this <coughs> is your Sigma lens. This there's something again about red is the mount. You need to if you use this part of the world, Nigeria, we use Canon and the Canon has the EF mount, which is this. This can take the EF mount. Then but there's the <coughs> wide full frame lenses that people use for big budget movies are the peer mount. Those most of those peer mount are very fast and they are full frame so you can actually buy a peer mount one good thing with red that you are not at disadvantage diet <clears throat> like oh this ef matter can't do anything no this costs about maybe one thousand dollars or nine hundred dollars you can change the mount <clears throat> this is an ef mount you can always change it and put a peer mount then you can still change it and put m M mount any any other kind of mount you have the the for third lens kit you can change it and put any kind of mount you have here so this now is an EF mount that is the one used by the normal Canon and every other video cameras so you can use any EF mount here and paste here <clears throat> and you're setting up the red it's almost coming to set up then this is your red monitor here. The red monitor. This comes with the red. There are different kind of monitors. There's different. If you if you if you want to buy different monitors, let me display. The different. There's the ultra bright. There's the pro touch, seven inch. There's the DMC two touch. There's a bit higher. Then there's the 4.7 inch, which is this. This is the 4.7 inch. So they're different, different. And all of them are touch screen here. So you can always buy anyone you want, depending on your budget. And you use it, just fix it there with your Allen key. So this is almost good. Then you have a trigger. This is the trigger handle. With this, you can actually record, press here to record. So what you're holding and you can still trigger it to record. And, and so you just fix it. There's, there's a chip here. The three pin chip goes to the three pin chips here, chip two here. So you make sure you don't miss that. You set it once you set it properly, you can just knot it down. Screw it to the and tighten it properly. Properly. Now you can hold it here and still trigger it at the same time. Now we have our media, which is called the red mag mini. The red mini mag so sorry this red mini mag which is 480 gig it's an ssd card a very fast ssd card it goes straight to the card port here so and this is the power adapter 
If you're not using battery, you can always use the power adapter here. Down here, you can fix it and make sure it's properly aligned. You turn it and twist it. It's not properly aligned this way. You look at it, okay? And it locks once it's properly aligned. If you're not using the battery, you can always roll it on direct power. Cool. Then this is the charger, the V-lock charger that comes with it. I think that is basically all you need. Then you can actually power the camera right now. Once you press this button over here, it powers up. The same button powers it on, the same button can record, but it's dicey for you to record with it, tap it gently. But it's better record with this and the one on the trigger here than here. Here can also shut it down, but it will be improper shut down. By the time you're booting, up, booting it up the next time, it will display on the screen improper shut down. So it's advisable to shut it down from the screen not from this power it on from here and shut it down from the screen okay so i'm going to be walking you through on i think this is basically all then there's something i need to show you to again it's coming up this the end the screen the display here can actually be fixed on two parts or if you have to display you can put one here and put one by the side depending on how you're rigging i can take this display and fix it by the side here maybe if i'm taking a long shot that the camera is off but i still want to preview it i don't have a monitor i can put it here fix it here and face it down so by the time it's up i'm looking up and I'm, the picture is facing down and i'm seeing it so have to hold the card now the camera is on fully okay this is the on camera ready to be used and everything every module is there and it's ready to be used so we take our time and i'll go through all the menu one after the other how to set it up what you want to achieve setting it up and uh, i think that will be all then we can now move to the next camera we explained some other camera red camera bodies and when to use and how to use each one and what to record on per time like this has the 5k till uh, the 2k hd so when do you use the 2k when do you use the 5k what is the advantage of using the 2k what is the advantage of using the 5 5k what is the disadvantage of using 5k? What is the disadvantage of using 2k? I will explain that. But let me let's run through all the modules on this screen and how to set everything up and what everything stands for.
Okay, so on the menu here, let's we have to dive deep into this menu and take it one after the other. So this is the menu. <coughs> and let's start from the image here. Image on the first we have our image pipeline. So this is where you you all have different options. This if you're recording on red raw, you can actually change this on post, but you can actually image pipeline that determines the pipeline we are recording the legacy or the p the ipp2 this has a lot of things to do with getting your image look flat and look very flat so if you're a color grading colorist you understand this image pipeline and most time when we are editing color grading <clears throat> on davinci you try to turn it to the ipp2 so that those images will look very flat than getting it with the color. So this look just sweet a bit because I'm using the IPP2. So if I change it back to the normal legacy, <clears throat> the image will look different again. But don't worry about this. This image look different again. This you can always correct on the post because you're recording it as a raw clip so this just the image pipeline on the image then this your white balance the white balance this where you set your in different presets of the white balance from the daylight the cloud the florist and the toxin but as a pro we always shoot on a specific white balance this is 5300 kelvin <clears throat> the tint is zero auto white balance we don't shoot on auto white balance so then this your iso where you control your iso your flute your shadows you can control it here too but we use specify iso this is 802 then let's go back then this your color saturation contrast brightness exposure compensation we can always tweak all of those here but still bear in mind this red is a raw footage all this can change on post your gain you come here still on image gain this way you gain your color gain your red green blue you can always increase that user matrix red green blue you can also increase that here your curves most of us are great on this image if you grade you will enjoy this a lot this is where you draw your curves and everything work on the curves the same reduce it tweak it and all those stuffs here then you can come to the red channel to work on the course put in some stuff work on it that way drag it up like that like that so this is your curve then let's go back here this is how your curve has done everything to be but <clears throat> you can always reset and not use the curve but let's leave that for another day then this is your log so let me go back to that curve i need to take everything back how do you reset reset curve you can always come here and reset the curve back and go to the red channel too and reset it back here so that so our curve has been reset then this is your lift gamma gain you can always lift your red your green your blue then this is your 3d lot if you can import lots import lots from external device and apply it here this 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 part of the the menu being image is more like grading your pictures before you shoot so that is what image is all about then this your monitor this where you determine the monitor this the this the lcd top that's the one i'm using this the ev evf top the viewfinder the one you put your eyes on but i'm not using it this is the lcd left that is by the side then this is the ev left by the side then you have your hdmi and your hdsdi output so this is just like selecting what 
monitor you want to use then you can always put priority on which of them you want to use here then you still have <clears throat> test you test your screen auto tune the chips the bars the lumas you can test all those here then you can test this the lumas but you off it here then you can test all those here then let's go to look around you can this for your external monitors then advance advance this where on the video what video small reduced juggle global filter monitor output sharpness then the screen this where you put pinch when you pinch to magnify double tap right to record double tap left for auto focus you can always set all of this on your screen to then this your gen lock if you're using a gen lock then this overlays let's start from the tools on overlay magnify you can always hit here to magnify <clears throat> what shows then you magnify and clean it then you can bounce back that then this your raw you can hit here to view everything on raw look at how flat it's looking you can hit and watch it on raw then you can see check there and moves then this your horizon to check that meter if it's horizon but it's not properly calibrated so you can't see it here so you can remove that then this your zebra to check monitor zebra if you want to check it your zebra is showing and everything so you can uncheck that to close it then this status this what shows on your screen on the camera your shutter speed percentage your voltage your input your rgb percent all those stuff then on the lens the f stuff and the matrix and the rack so go by this your guide this where you put your frame guide your action guide your title guide the general guide then on custom you customize what you want to the rest standard the rest steel and all those then that is everything about overlay power this way you shut down your power out out you can reset that a power saver if you want to save power power in and all those stuff then this is playback if you have media there's no memory card the memory card is bad so we are trying to fix it so if you have media you play back here so let's go back to the menu so on media this device if you have a standard device connected to it you can play this your clips there's no clip there's no card inside the camera then here is presets this place is whatever preset you set your looks presets your auto presets this where you set them and if you want to work on preset this where you set it up then you have your settings now from settings let's start from the top here where is the project once you hit the project you have your frame rate what frame rate do you want to shoot 25 and you must make sure the frame rate here it tallies with the frame rate your recording frame rate must tally with the project base frame rate for you to have sound i will explain that later so your exposure you have your exposure your shutter speed you have your shutter angle then your time code you have the time code the external time code source is not attached to it then your slate so this is where you slate this this is where you you can this for the people the script supervisors and the continuity people or the clapper people so this is where you queue in typing the scene number and everything the scene you're shooting then the shot the tick copyright location the camera is this a camera a or camera b the camera position center camera operator you put his name here project production company's name director's name dop's name the unit's name auto slate for it to continue slating you queue it here then this is the format what are you recording 5k is it on anamorphic if you want to do anamorphic but if you're not doing anamorphic so go back everything your aspect ratio anamorphic off or on 
anamorphic mean getting it wide and all those all those wide look look at it here now this anamorphic look getting it wide it's usually good when you're shooting anamorphic and you're using anamorphic lenses so let's go back to project format and remove it from anamorphic we can put it back off the anamorphic so it's looking shrinked back so set that back so we've off it from the anamorphic so this is our normal square pixels so project back format that's where we stopped so if you're shooting anamorphic or you're shooting normal format this is where you set it up then sensor what sensor you're using this it just shows here and everything so that's all about project recording let's start from here what mode local storage local continuous recording codec red raw or prores you can do <laughs> so <laughs> let's go so now this is your codec you can record on your red or you can record red raw and prores at the same time or red raw with avid at the same time or you can just record only prores or you can just record only avid this guy can do it or you can record just your red draw just once so selecting this determines by the space your memory card capacity if you have a lot of memory card capacity then you can be recording your red draw and you're recording prores at the same time but if you don't have that you just leave it only on the red draw and you're good to go so now we have the frame processor so this processes the frame your red row, I'm on red row now, so what, what, how do I want to process it depending on the space? I want it very heavy, this. I want it very light. I go higher. The higher you go, the, the lighter your, your space, your picture will be. And it will record in very low space. So, but we usually put it on this default, which is the 8.1. So then your frame processor no frame processor your pre-record your indicator if you have external stuff that indicate that beeps and all those stuff so that is it the, about the recording the hdr high dynamic range so if you're recording on hdr you cue it here if you're not recording on hdr you off it here okay so then now this is your playback your audio playback here so you can do your control here this all your channel if you have multiple channel on it you can control everything here headphone and everything but if you don't screw then this is a miss to where you can miss from your headphone and your monitors at the same time this for the audio guys then this is your focus so now the focus the different kind of focus your manual focus there's the auto focus camera the continuous focus you depend on what spot focus small focus and depend on so what you want to use manual most of us use manual because we use the focus puller if you want to rack focus that is if you're using the confirm that is the auto focus then you can actually rack focus if i'm here and your center cycle where let me see spot confirm confirm okay it's not racking though confirm cycle bar by cycle okay this for racking focus when you're using an auto focus system but let's leave it on manual focus system then go back this your exposure assist to assist you on exposure and all those stuff so if I put it on single shot, continuous shot, preview, continuous preview recording, it just assist you. Then this is your setup. Let's go to setup. This is key if you're the key people using key with 3D. This is a big work. This is a big stuff on its own, a big branch on its own on red. So date if you're going to set up the date and everything. This communication now, this if you're using the serial control out port which is behind the camera 
we can come here and connect that Depend element technical and all those on red command protocols or if you want to control your red over wi-fi which there's some add you can always put it and set up the wi-fi and all those stuff or ad hoc set up channel and wi-fi your wi-fi will be on if you check the wi-fi now indicator is already showing here so this is your ip so anybody can connect to the wi-fi and control the red here well let's disable it so Okay, now this is the general purpose input sync. If you have any external camera or any external device that you want to sync settings, this is where you come and sync it. Then this is your fan control. I put it on quiet because I'm recording. Normally it should be on adaptive. If I put it on adaptive, the fan will start blazing. Or, or I can put it on on adaptive preview so when you're recording what this does it will start making noise but when you're recording it will go on silent so depending on the weather where you are before you put it on quiet make sure you're not where the temperature is very high like in the north so but normally you leave it on this if you're recording audio and you don't want noise you leave it on the but if you're not recording audio you can leave it on adaptive <clears throat> so let's take it back to quiet now this is the noise I put it on adaptive quiet now start making noise back okay so this is your lens this covers what f-stop you're shooting on right now and your infos and everything what the lens is made is sigma at 18 to 35 1.8 the metadata of the lens is where it shows that goes with it so that is it so on our maintenance here what we have your save log if the media was attached to it maintenance save log then your upgrade if you want to upgrade your camera as we do your calibrate if you want to calibrate the camera and everything the sensor then self test enable sensor pattern touch screen and all those if you want to touch the screen and test it system restore this is where you restore system setting back to default if you are confused with whatever you've done so before we go let me change the fan control here and put it on quiet so let's go back to where we are so this way restore system and everything then we discover hard drive are you sure you want to reset the hardware we discover settings i said no so this is the system status program status and everything to check whatever you're working on the status this way you check it then this is the the optical low pass filter optical low pass filter this way it sees on the camera this and inbuilt on the sensor of the camera so it's on standard and that is it so i think basically this is everything you need to see on the menu and what it stands for so most of those status most of what we did on on the menu are already here like the frame rate you can change your frame rate here if you're shooting on high frames but check what happens to the audio the audio stops recording but if you are shooting on the same frame rate on 25 frames and you click the audio starts recording back so that's what i mean then when i say make sure your frame rate is to say your project frame rate is the same with your recording frame rates if your project frame rate is not the same with your recording frame rate you won't have audio so this is how you check you go here on advanced and you see i can change this this is my project frame rate if i put it on 30 now and i close it and i'm i'm recording on my project on my 
recording frame rate 25 there is no audio the same 25 that was giving me audio now stop giving audio because my project frame rate is on 30 so see it under here project very speed project frame rate 30 so that means i need to this my recording pro frame rate is 25 so i need to make my recording frame rate 30 for me to have audio audio is there now so always make sure you have both if you're not seeing audio then check your project frame rate with your recording frame rate so this your iso which we saw on the menu this is my stop this is your shutter this is your white balance this is your recording format which we saw you can always switch to 2k hd or to the highest sensor if, when you're using the 2k when you're using anything lower than the sensor that is the 5k sensor your quality drops and it crops the crop sensor there with this my 5k you could see the person here is not cropped but on 2k it got darker and it's cropped it's cropped i can't even see him so you don't use the full sensor when you reduce your frame to lower your frame so if you want to maximize all the sensors use the highest frame which is 5k so you have a better picture and a clearer picture sharper picture this way so this is your compression rate then this is the menu with that with then this is your monitors and this everything this is your battery i think moving forward this we will draw the cutting for today so i will title this red master class 101 so we we'll still have red master class 102 um a lot we just keep going from there from there from there so we don't exceed and make it very long so we just stop here for today guys before we close for today, we are going to be having a lot of master class. This is Red Master Class 101. So we are going to be having Red Master Class 102 and Red Master Class 103 like that. But before we close today, I want you to just hold on to one thing. The current red body system is the Red Komodo, Red DSMC2, Red Ranger. Now, Komodo has a new sensor on its own which is the CSK global shutter sensor the red DSMC2 carries any of the helium sensor Mostro sensor and the red Gemini sensor and the red dragon S sensor why the red range of the same way carries the helium sensor Mostro sensor red Gemini sensor but it doesn't carry the dragon S sensor so now I want you to understand thing about the whole sensor thing I'm talking about. I said from beginning, I said CD, the DS, DSMC2 as the car with different, um, with different cylinder. You see the 4K as the V4. You see the 6K as the V6. Then you see the 8K as the V8. So that way, you still get to understand that this is the body it can carry a v8 it can be 8k it can be mostro looking like this or this is the body it can be dragon s 6k looking like this and this is the body it can be raven 4.5k looking like this the same body but different cylinder which is the v4 v6 and v8 now there's a different thing again about the Mm, the red ranger if any of you that knows the red ranger knows it's longer in shape it has the red mosto and the red uh, helium and the red gemini on it so for me you see that as you know where you have a car like the benz you have a saloon and a wagon this can carry the same sensor with the red ranger but see the red ranger as the saloon see the red ranger as the wagon and this dsmc2 as the saloon so the red ranger is the wagon that carries the same sensor but has extra room to accommodate a lot of things a lot of loops so the extra room to accommodate a lot of ports like having three sdi outputs having plug-in having it so you can rig it up easily just like a wagon car that you can carry a lot of load that a saloon car cannot do 
but at the end of the day, they have the same sensors inside. So, before I take your time, thank you for joining this masterclass, and I hope to see you on the next masterclass. And this is Sam Presto from Sam Presto Films, and see you on the next one. Thank you.